Hello folks, in this one we're looking at the top 10 cars that are actually quite cheap but look really expensive. So these are all cars under 10 grand. I know cheap's a relative thing but they're all under 10,000 pounds. In some of these cases you can get nicer examples at a higher price than the 10 grand and some of them they're available well under the 10 grand. I hope you enjoy the video and as always thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks. Okay, so number 10, let's get started with number 10. These are in no particular order, by the way. Let's get straight at it. So this is the BMW 7 Series. This one's a 730D and it's the SE spec. There are lots of 7 Series around at this sort of price mark. This one's got 66,000 miles, which is really good. You can get cheaper, older, older cars. You can get higher mileage cars. This one's 9995, 730D four door automatic and let's have a look i mean that is luxury isn't it i mean that looks an expensive car if that's sitting on your drive someone thinks that's someone that's doing well in life that's someone that's earning a few quid i mean that is lovely isn't it 10 grand three liter automatic sixty-six thousand miles i must admit I'd seriously consider something like that myself. Now, obviously, there are loads of these around, lots of big petrols and things. Just to give you an idea on this diesel, you're looking 275 quid a year road tax, 45.1 mpg, and 0 to 60 on it, 7.2 seconds, which for a big car like that is very, very decent, isn't it? And again, look at that for an interior. Would you believe that was a 10 grand car? A 10 year old 10 grand car? You wouldn't, I don't think. I mean, that's. That really is top class. Right, next is the 2009 uh, Land Rover Range Rover Sport. As you know, I'm not a massive fan of these things for their reliability because um, there are just too many horror stories out there. There are also lots of stories of people that have had one for 10 years and it's never let them down and blah, blah, blah. But there are a ton of horror stories and some of the bills are massive. But if you're looking at a luxurious car, I mean, what would this thing have been when it was new? 80 grand? So this is a 2009 model, and I mean, that looks great, doesn't it? It doesn't look massively different from a modern Range Rover. Modern Range Rover Sport, really, does it? And these things often have a private plate stuck on them, so uh, interior looks a bit dated now, but it's big. It's cavernous, actually. It's not just big, it's cavernous, isn't it? Look how much legroom there is there. Nice leather interior, huge boot, parcel cover there. Uh, so this one's the 3.6 litre turbo diesel, 600 quid a year car tax, 25 mpg on a diesel. Yuck. 8.6 seconds. It's just because the thing's so massive and heavy. But it is a big, luxurious car. And if you're going to buy that for nine grand, let's say you get that for nine grand, 89,000 miles on it, by the way, this one. Let's say you get that for nine grand. I would say keep two in your back pocket for when things go wrong. And you probably want about 400 quid to get you to Tesco's and back in it, don't you, on that sort of MPG. Running costs are obviously going to be epic on it. So something to bear in mind. Number eight. Look at this. A Maserati Coupe. Wowza. Now that is a cool looking car. I know the appearance of cars is very subjective and what you might think is nice, I think is horrible and vice versa. But there's nothing wrong with a Maserati, is there? Apart from the fact they don't work very often and when they go wrong they cost quite a lot of money. But um, look at that. Wow. So this is the by far the sportiest offering we've got in this lineup. But I just think they're fantastic looking cars. And um, would you believe, I mean, that one's 4.2 litre petrol, 75,000 miles on it. But would you believe that's 10 grand? Seriously, that car is 10 grand. It blows my mind, to be honest, that you can get a Maserati for Ford Focus money. A 4.9 seconds to 60, 340 quid a year uh, road tax. 15 mpg claimed 10 around town so if you do the usual rule of thumb that i do and sort of deduct 30 35 percent you're probably looking at 10 combined and about six seven around town which is uh pretty mind-blowing isn't it 
Uh, and obviously any parts or anything on this are going to be expensive and uh, it's a Maserati and Italian cars are not always known for their reliability especially at that sort of premium end but 10 grand for one of those is bonkers right number seven 2011 Mercedes-Benz S-Class this is the S350 CDI there are a ton of these available. You can get high mileage versions at a much lower price, or you can get a newer version with high miles for at this kind of price. But this one seemed to be sort of a happy medium for me. So it's done 99,000, which is good mileage, but if one of these is well serviced, which this one claims to be, then they should go on forever in a day. And um, someone's got the wheels, which I don't particularly like those on it but it's a huge sort of statesman type car and it's like driving around in your lounge. Look at that interior. It's bonkers, absolutely bonkers. Uh, they look like aftermarket mats that have been put in there and they're probably not the best color choice. They do grab your attention, don't they? And there's that big old V6. Running costs on this one, 340 quid a year tax, 36.7 claimed MPG and 0 to 67.8 seconds. There are tons of different engines on these. You can get huge five liter monsters and all sorts. So uh, if, a, if an S-Class is your thing, and I mean, they do look the business, don't they? This one has been got out a bit, but they do look the business generally. If an S-Class is your thing, there is one to suit your budget. Right, 2008 Lexus GS 450H. Now the thing about this one that's gonna have over all the others it might be slightly less exciting to some people, but it's going to be reliable. Right? Lexus are famed for reliability. The parent company's Toyota, who are famed for their reliability. And these things don't let people down very often. And it's just, just a fact. Just a plain old simple fact. They seem to put the same picture on about 15 times for each one, which is good. Let's have a look at the interior. Let's do it this way. Okay. So lots of fake wood in there, but otherwise it's a fairly luxurious interior. It needs a good blooming clean as well, that. But there we go. It's a nice looking car, isn't it? Where's the side profile? There we go. I mean, that is a good looking car. 66,000, three and a half litre petrol hybrid. Uh, 265 pounds a year road tax. 35.8 combined MPG, 5.9 seconds to 60, and it's not going to let you down. Find one that's been well serviced, really well serviced, and uh, it will not let you down. Great car, eight grand. Right, number five is the Jaguar XJ. And I mean, the, these pictures are horrendous as a private seller, but so forgive me for the pictures, but look at that. That is great, isn't it? I mean, that is a properly, properly nice interior. That's a gorgeous looking car. Unfortunately, the pictures are terrible on this particular one, uh, which is probably one of the nicest looking cars here and the pictures are terrible. This is the angle with the XJ. It's this huge, big swooping roof line that comes down. It's it's a gorgeous looking car, I think. Uh, they are huge, they are massive cars. This one's done 93 and a half thousand miles. It's a three litre turbo diesel V6, premium luxury trim, and 0.66.4 seconds, 315 quid a year road tax, and 39.2 MPG. Much like the Range Rover, you should only buy one of these if you've got a little bit of money set aside for when things go wrong, because Jaguar are not famed for reliability and they're also, well, they're actually fairly well known for having expensive parts and repairs costs. So bear that in mind whenever you look at a, a used Jag. It may not be the most reliable thing in the world and then if it does go wrong, it's not going to be the cheapest thing in the world to put right. Number four, 2011 Audi A8. And this is the 3 litre TDI SE Executive Tiptronic Auto. Uh, you're looking at 250 quid car tax, uh, 42.8 combined MPG, 6.1 seconds to 60. And let's have a look at this bad boy. 
yeah nice interior again again with the the wood trim but you just always seem to get it in these luxury cars if it's not your bag you can get it wrapped it's not the end of the world i know a lot of people like it reversing camera parking sensors all around and look at those seats looks like something out of a you know a ceo study or something not very good setting to take these pictures in fairness but that is a good looking car i think you'll agree Eighty-five thousand miles 10 grand not bad is it again you can get high mileage versions of this for quite a lot less and there are quite a lot of high mileage ones around because um obviously they're used for chauffeur cars quite a lot and um as always you'll see a lot of these kind of cars around at ninety-nine thousand miles and they always smell a bit iffy to me because um it's a very convenient mileage for them to be at so always dig into that service history speak to the people that have stamped the book and see if they know the car 2007 cadillac cts right so this model i think went from 2003 to 07 something well, around those around that sort of time uh 3.6 v6 sport luxury and um interior wise I mean, Cadillac is a luxury brand, without a doubt. But American cars don't always have the same level of interior trim that we expect in Europe. So it's possibly a bit behind the others in terms of the interior trim. But um, it's a Cadillac. It's got sat nav. Those wheels do nothing for me. But again, you, you may be in love with them. But I don't think they suit the car one bit. But there it is in profile, and those wheels to me just look a bit daft on it. Um, but stick a different set of wheels on that. And that is a very, very good looking car. That obviously came out to rival to rival the Germans, and they've 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 tried again since and, and had some really, really nice cars along the way. Again, think about parts costs on this, it's not gonna be you know, if you get a problem with it, it's probably going to cost you more than if you had a Mondeo or something because it's Cadillac and we don't have tons of them over here and the parts are not going to be quite so easy to get hold of. And then running cost, 24 MPG. Not fantastic, is it? And 600 quid a year in tax. Seven seconds to 60. There we go, Cadillac CTS. Five and a half grand though, that one. And there, there are cheaper examples around as well, but five and a half grand with seven. I buried the lead here, didn't I? It's got 17,000 miles on it. 17,000 miles, one owner from new. That's mental. 17,000 miles. And it's a 2007 car, one owner from new. Right, next one. Number two, Porsche Cayenne, 2007, 4.8 litre Tiptronic S. Wow. Right, think what this car cost when it was new. You're talking, I don't know, it's got to be six figures, isn't it? And we're now looking at it as 2007. We're now looking at it at 9999. So interior is nice, very nice, very Porsche. Massive boot, plenty of space in there, huge amount of space in there. Where's the dash? There we go. That's very nice looking to me. That's very, that that to me. I'd take that all day with like the leather trim rather than that plastic wood. Uh, I'd always prefer that, but so many of the manufacturers seem to think we like the plastic wood. Running cost six hundred quid a year uh, annual tax and twenty mpg. Not sixty in six point eight seconds. Again, it's a very. It's got four point eight liter engine in it, but um, and petrol engine, but. It's a big, big, heavy car, and it's a it's a lot of car to move down the road. Seventy two thousand miles. Right, last but by no means least, we couldn't do a video like this without a Bentley. So number one is a Bentley Eight, nineteen eighty nine, six point eight injection, four door auto. I don't suppose it's got performance on it. No, and no running cost. It's too old. Look at this thing. So this has done 56,500 miles. And I mean, 
yes, it's dated as anything. Look, it's got a car phone, an actual car phone on a cable. And it's absolutely dated, but it's absolutely glorious, this thing. Look at that. It's like a time capsule. And I mean, it's in perfect condition, isn't it? Was it th uh, 32 years old, this car, right? 32 years old. But it looks the mustard, doesn't it? If ever there's a cheap car that looks expensive, it's this one. If you stopped the man in the street and said, how much is this car? Even though it's an old one and everyone can see it's an old one and everything else. Most people, I, would, I personally think, are going to say, I don't know, 20 grand. I mean, the new equivalent of that, you're looking sort of 200k plus. So most people think it's a Rolls, to be fair. But uh, 6.8 litre automatic petrol four doors i mean mpg on that's going to be about four you know it's going to be next to nothing but what an absolute monster of a car for eight grand with fifty six and a half thousand miles on it now as i've warned on some of these other cars think about servicing and repairs many moons ago i used to be involved in a scheme for bentley insurance and I know a windscreen on the Bentley Continental GT at the time, this was probably, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, the windscreen on the Bentley Continental GT at the time was 2,300 quid for a windscreen, all right? Uh, if you have a car like this, you almost need a bottomless pit of money for if things go wrong, because where on a normal car, some, a part costs 300 quid, on a Bentley it costs three grand. That's just how it works, all right? But if you want something um, to poodle around and take to car shows and, and and all the rest of it, then it's pretty cool, isn't it? I hope you like that one, guys. Um, I've done similar videos to this in the past, but I'm trying to present things in a slightly different way just to see what you think. So if you've got nice comments about it, please leave them. And uh, if you've got something horrible to say, Go and leave it on someone else's video. Thanks. Seriously though, thanks for watching. Give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. I've done a deal with VCheck, who I think are one of the premier providers of online car history checks. As you can see here on this quick sample report, you can check the registered VIN number against the one that's actually on the vehicle. You can see the current MOT and road tax status. Has the car ever been stolen? Is there outstanding finance? Has it been an insurance write-off? If so, what kind? If it has been, can you see photos of the car before the damage was repaired? You know, you might see this car now and it's in perfect condition, but does seeing these images of it at the time of the accident make you change your mind possibly? Has it been a taxi? Number of previous keepers and the dates for those? Number plate changes? Mileage records? This is great because you can see any discrepancies in the mileage in a really easy to follow way so if it done 50,000 one year 40 the next you know there's a problem you've also got the MOT history checks all built into this one single report and it'll give you a basic car valuation the bundles start from £1.60 a check but I would all strongly recommend you go for the full check now I've done a deal with VCheck they do pay me if you use my link so please do that because it helps support the channel and I have to tell you that this is a completely unbiased recommendation you should never buy used car without running these kind of checks and this is a fantastic one please use the link in the video description and help support the channel thanks